Today I'm going to demonstrate how you can add different materials to any static mesh that you want so that you can give all of your different static meshes a bit more color. This is the third person template of Unreal Engine 5.6. And to start, we need to choose a target. So let's just choose this half cylinder thing that's right in front of us here. And we can see inside of the details for this cylinder that they only have one color attached or one material attached. And we want, let's just say different faces of this cylinder to look like different colors. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use the material editor. And to get that started, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this into the middle of the scene so that I can see all of the different sides of it as we go and do these next steps. And then I'm just gonna get myself nice and close. If you do find that your camera is a little too sensitive, then what you can do is you can scroll up and down on your mouse wheel. Down is what makes things less sensitive, and then you can move a lot slower, which will be handy as we go through and select these different faces. To get us started, we're gonna go to the top left-hand corner and we're gonna change away from selection mode and we're gonna go into modeling mode. And this is gonna bring up this menu here, but we don't wanna do anything with these. We wanna to go to the more section in the bottom left of this new pop-up, and we wanna type on attributes. Now our end goal is to hit edit materials and then paint on different materials and assign them. But there's something that we can do to make this process way easier. So we're gonna hit cancel for now, and we're gonna go into paint polygroups instead. Now a polygroup as I understand it is a group of different faces that then gets lumped together for future actions inside of Unreal Engine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each face and we're going to assign it to be a polygroup. So a couple of things that I like to do when I'm doing this brushing. If I just started painting onto this top piece here, you can see that I'm painting on both the top and this side face and even this face over here. So what we're gonna do to stop that from happening is I'm going to change the angle threshold over here to be 45. Now you can see as I paint on top, it's stuck to the on top, which is what we're gonna want as we're painting these hard edges. Next, your brush size. Feel free to make this whatever you want with the angle threshold what it is. Anything from 0.25 to about 0.4 should be fine, but I'm gonna stick to 0.25. And then finally, we have the set group. This is going to be what we are painting on. So for instance, we're gonna start with group zero and we're going to paint group zero first. And let's make group zero this top face here. So when I paint on group zero, you can see that it's all changing color to this white color. And now group zero is done. Next, I wanna paint group one. So I'm gonna change my set group to one. And I'm gonna choose that to be say this flat edge here. And I'm gonna paint this and it's gonna turn into this bluish color here. And you will see that we have now this color and this color. Each color represents a face or a poly group that we are setting up here. Next, I'm going to change my group to two. And now I'm gonna paint this large curved face here. So I'm just gonna go corner to corner and it turns into this pinkish color. Make sure you're hitting all of those corners. This is another reason why that angle threshold is so nice to have. And now that is our third poly group done. I'm going to increment this to three now and we're gonna paint on this side and we'll paint that to be whatever color you wanna call this. And then lastly, poly group four, I'm gonna to go to the bottom and I'm just gonna paint this bottom piece here. So right away you can see a lot of flexibility with you being able to decide what groups are your own. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to hit accept and that is going to lock in those poly groups to the default slot. And the reason I know they're the default slot is because we are looking at the active poly group default when we hit accept. So any changes we make get applied to this default poly group. So now with our poly groups assigned, we're good to go into edit materials. This is where we're actually going to adjust the materials that are on this mesh. Your size can stay the way that it is, but we're gonna change our selection mode away from brush and towards all in group. This is why we set up poly groups is so that we can leverage all in group. So what you can see here is if I go and I'm just in brush and I select, you can see that I'm just painting faces. But when I go and change this to all in group, when I click, it's going to automatically take everything that is attached to my selection that is in the same group. It's very easy and now we're leveraging that poly group that in my opinion is worth the extra setup. So now that we know how to select our group, how do we assign color? Well, and that's gonna be on this left-hand side underneath materials. We can see that we have one active material and that lines up to what we saw in our details earlier. What we can do here is we can add materials. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add one for every face that we created. So that means we're gonna have five total materials or zero through four. And I'm just going to assign random colors here. Let's do this pink color. Let's do a blue color. Let's do a red color. And let's do this weird black color as well. 
So now with our materials outlined and our selection present, and you can always see what you've selected because it's going to show up in this red color. And if you ever want to deselect something, just press shift and it's going to clear your selection. But with our first face selected, we're now going to assign it a material. So what we're going to do is we're going to change the active material to whatever material we want it to be. So let's say for this one, I want this to be the pink color. I'm then going to scroll down and I'm just going to collapse the materials now that they're set up and I'm going to hit this assign active material button. And you're gonna notice that the selection clears, but the color doesn't show up. That is intended. We are still in the painting mode. Your colors are not going to show up until we accept this. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint all of our faces. I'm gonna select the top and it selects that entire face. And then I'm going to hit the little drop down to change this to be the blue color, let's say. And I'm once again going to assign the active material, which assigns it on the top. Let's do the same thing here select that and let's make this our red color and we're going to assign our active material let's repeat what a couple more times here select our curve we're going to make that the black color here and we're going to assign the active material and then on the bottom we'll select that and we'll make that our default color or material zero and we'll assign our active color there with all of that selection being completed we are now going to hit accept to enable these materials to exist and this is actually going to push all of our selections to the main object so as i hit select here you're going to see not only does this color fill in but this object over here which is the same mesh is also going to get our changes so i'm going to hit accept and now you can see our colors come through nice and clear as selected before very nice and pretty, very crisp. And at any point now, you can see in this menu for our details for this selected mesh, we can now change any piece of this. So if I change my mind and I actually want this black material to change this weird arrow material, we're gonna let those shaders compile. And then you can see that the color changes on just this selection of mesh. You can see down there that we still have the default selection as we set up down there. And that's all you need to know about how you can set up custom materials and custom material slots on any static mesh in Unreal Engine 5. I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.